start Creo and first select working directory. Preferably use a folder in the C drive which is the local hard disk. In my case I created a scratch folder and Creo and Vic2 folder and I'll be using this as my working directory. And I'm creating a new part and I'll give it a simple name beam and then I can create a simple sketch um, I'll do that on the right plane so start an extrusion and I can extrude a simple rectangle on this so we can start from the origin and go a certain distance and then modify the dimensions so we want the, a beam of size 10 and 20 in the um, depth and we wanted the beam to be 100 millimeter long so we can change that to 100 and enter so that's my beam which has 10 mm um, width and 20 mm depth and 100 mm length but one thing that you have to ensure is that you have used correct units and in my case I can check that under file prepare model properties and you can see that by default, in my case, Creo started with inches, pounds and seconds. And that's not the unit system I wanted to use. So I can go to change and I can choose millimeters, newton, seconds and then click on set. And what I can also choose here is interpret dimensions. So one inch becomes one millimeter. So press OK and then close. And at the same dialog box, I can also assign a material. So I'll use a low alloy steel, so that will be under ferrous materials. So I can choose steel low alloy. Double click and it appears on the dialog box and press OK. And you can change, for example, um, other parameters here, but we're not going to work on them. But we can look at the mass property, for example. If you click on I, this should give you the volume, the surface area, the density and also the mass of your part. So this one is 1.57 E-4 tons. So you can use a converter to change that to kilograms or grams. And make sure that your units are consistent and you are getting reasonable results in these dialog boxes. So that's our part, very simple and we just need to apply some loads on it. So we can go to applications, simulate and what we said we'll do was we'll fix this surface on the left fully so we can check that the translations are fully fixed. Uh, you can free in certain directions and then apply um, fixing in other directions or you can also specify a given uh, millimeter displacement for example but in our case we'll just fully fix it and there are no rotations um, required to be fixed on that solid model so we'll just say OK and what we also go is on the right hand side we want to apply a force so let's try a hundred newton force downwards just to specify our bending load so that's going to be in the y direction in the negative direction I can preview that so it's all going in the correct direction I want to apply press OK so that's my load case 1 and I think I'm ready to solve this one so I can go to analysis and studies I can say I want to do a new static analysis and there are all the other sets of analysis that I can do as well model, buckling, fatigue, pre-stress, dynamic but in our case 
we are concentrating on the static analysis. So we can give a name to the analysis, uh, just say analysis1. Um, you'll have one constraint set, one load set, and we can change our method to multipass adaptive, and we can increase our convergence rate by making this value smaller, percentage convergence 5%. So press OK, and I'm ready to solve my model. So I click Run, Interactive Diagnostics, yes, and it's running at the moment, and it should only take a few seconds. So you can say that it has done six passes and run is completed. So we can um, close that and we can click on this to view our results. So we can do OK and show and that shows me my uh, typical beam bending pattern. That is for the von Mises stress. And I can note that the maximum stress is 14.96 megapascals. Always check your units for display. So this case is megapascals. I can edit this window and I can go to display options. I want to see the deformed shape and I want to see element edges. And if I OK and show, I can only see that you can see that there are only a few elements used in this case. So um, it's a relatively good result for a few elements. That's because these are p-type elements and they have very high polynomial orders. You can check, for example, the p-level here. And you can see that the p-levels, especially on the left edge, can go up to uh, polynomial level 5 or even 6. You can see it on the contour on the right. We can also look at displacements and displacements say in the vertical direction. So that can see that can be seen that uh, this has displaced uh, 0 0.024 millimeters downwards. So the result is negative. You can also check the magnitude, so displacements in x, y, z at any point as a magnitude is displayed. And we can also display stress, and we can go and check that we want to see stresses in the x direction, for example, and that should give us our typical beam bending stresses. Um, if we wanted to see what happens at a particular point, we can do dynamic query. So if I go on the model, you can see that uh, where my mouse pointer is, I can get a value. And on the very left edge, you actually see a stress concentration. That very sharp stress concentrations are caused by a very um, hard boundary condition. Because we have fully fixed the left edge, it's a bit like it's connected to an infinitely stiff plate. So that's creating stress concentrations at these corners. So the results at these edges are not going to be accurate. But if you want to validate this model, you can take a result from a slightly away distance from the edge, and that's saying about 16 megapascals. So you can check that 16 megapascal stress level against the engineer engineer's beam bending formula, sigma equals my upon i. So we can compare that and at the top you see that it's a positive tensile value and at the bottom you see that it is a negative which is compressive value. The next thing I wanted to do was um, let's say I wanted to show um, deformed element edges, let's say animate as well, OK and show, and that also shows how the structure is displacing, and that should also give you an idea about the accuracy of your result. Are the results 
uh, representative of what's going to happen in real life. Always check that. You can go back to edit and stop the animation and OK and show again. You can see that it's a displaced shape scaled up automatically and um, using a very few elements it's got um, stresses in the x direction a positive value of about 20 megapascals so let's try to increase the mesh density and see how our results compare so we can exit from the viewing of the results we can close this and how you can change the mesh density is by refining the model. So if you go to refine model and you can add a control, you can say enter a simple control like maximum element size and there are others as well. You can add controls on edges, surfaces, etc. This one is the simplest maximum element size and it's asking for a geometrical reference. Instead of a reference on a surface, I'll create a reference on the component and that automatically selects my part, beam part. And I need to enter the element size. So in my case, I'll enter, say, 20 millimeters and press OK. And I can click Auto Gem and create a mesh. And you can see that, um, that this gives me the total number of elements. So it's using 72 tetrahedron elements. So we can close that, close that. We don't need to save this just now. Um, but we can rerun this model. So we can go back to home and then analysis and studies and rerun it using the same boundary conditions. It'll overwrite the previous one. It'll probably take a few seconds more because we added a few more elements, but it generally doesn't matter at a few hundred elements. It should still solve in a few seconds. So review results, OK and show. And you can see that the contours have probably changed a bit. And we can check the X stresses again. Um, we wanted to look at X stress and display options. Let's see deformed with element edges and OK and show. And you can see that the maximum stress is about 19.5. But remember this is at a stress concentration. So we can do a dynamic query and look at stresses just a bit slightly away from the um, stress concentration. So that's showing something like 15 megapascals. What we'll learn in the future is um, how to get stresses at certain points and how to exclude, for example, the stress concentrations in our um, adaptive analysis, for example, for optimization. But at the moment, you can use the values like 14, 15 megapascals we are seeing in our um, validation studies and also in our convergence studies. So that concludes the um, tutorial for this um, beam problem.